spearheading the effort legally to have Aboriginal voices heard on several of these issues has been George Newhouse. Most of you who are from Sydney will know George as a practicing solicitor from Shine, social justice uh, group, which is uh, a, a legal practice that spends much of its time trying to represent the Aboriginal voices. He was involved in Barbara Shaw's alliance in Central Australia, which tried to set out the argument that everything being done under the guise of the Northern Territory intervention, in fact, is trampling our own law and the international covenants that Australia has pledged uh, to support. Uh, George Newhouse in 2010 began to assist the traditional owners of Muckety to start the legal action against the Northern Lands Council and the Government of Australia in order to overturn the nomination of this as a site for the first radioactive waste storage facility in Australia. Please welcome George Newhouse. Um, I'm very honoured to be um, representing uh, the people of Wickening Station and um, Diane, uh, who you've um, heard earlier, is really a driving force behind the legal push uh, to overturn the nomination. Without her, I don't think um, we would have had federal, former Federal Court Judge Ron Merkel, Julian Burnside, a fantastic legal team, um, assisting um, the people at Muckety Station to um, assert their rights. And when you look at the legal case, I've been invited to come and talk to you a little bit about the, the law. Um, it's not really a case uh, that involves nuclear issues. It's about dispossession. It's about a bad system that's allowing the Northern Land Council to effectively steal land from one family, from several family groups, and distribute it to another and allow um, uh, that one particular family group on that land to make decisions about the um, nuclear waste dump at the expense of all the others. And that's what's really going on here. We, when you live in Sydney, the, the Aboriginal Land Rights Northern Territory Act is probably something that most people don't know much about. Um, it, it's an odd system. It's not native title. It's a, it's a system of trusts that have been set up over freehold land. This land is owned by seven family groups at Muckety Station. And in 1997, the land was granted to seven uh, family groups on the basis of a very detailed land commissioner's report. And the land commissioner said, and this is public information, that this the seven family groups had stories and dreamings that overlapped each other. And in the central desert, there are only so many waterholes and so many uh, sacred sites, and they're shared amongst people. But we find that many years later, the Northern Land Council has come up with a totally different story that dispossesses six or seven family groups from their own land. Seven family groups that went through a legal process that had a land commissioner recommend that they um, all that the trust hold the land for all of them have found themselves in a position where one small family group dominate, effectively stealing, effectively dispossessing all the other families from their land, and the and the. the the complaint that we've lodged in the federal court and the proceedings really do have the potential to change the way land councils deal with Aboriginal land. Because the allegations that are being made um, are that the land council um, acted in a misleading and deceptive manner in breach of the consumer laws, it, that it did not act reasonably in good faith, or in good faith. It did not make proper inquiries about the ownership of the land. It did not properly consult with the um, uh, traditional owners of the land. It breached its statutory and its fiduciary duties to the traditional Aboriginal owners of the, non of the land. And it acted, it acted inconsistently with the findings of the land commissioner without a proper lawful basis for doing so. And it carried out its activities with an improper purpose and beyond its powers. And it did so 
because it was hopelessly conflicted, the Land Council was at the same time the guardian of the land and the promoter of a nuclear waste dump. It could not properly resolve its, con its conflict of interest. And that's what happened in this case. It, its inability to control the conflict of interest that it had being a promoter of nuclear waste dumps on Aboriginal land with its guardianship role and advisory role to the trust, it was hopelessly conflicted and it went about this process in a very, very improper uh, manner. And you're seeing the results played out now. The, the, the nomination was made in 2007 and nothing has happened. Nothing has happened because the process was bad from the start and it was a rotten nomination and the legal team are taking steps to ensure that the nomination does not proceed further. So thanks to all of you for coming tonight and thanks for Diane for inviting us to assist her and her family groups with their fight against both the Federal Government and the Northern Land Council. Thank you very much.